Scrappers, it's Vanessa here. Happy New Year. I wanted to give a shout out and say welcome to all my new subscribers and to all of my longtime subscribers. Hey, Happy New Year. Welcome back. For my first video of the new year, I wanted to do something fun and start my channel off for this year with sort of a color inspired mood board, I guess you could say. And what I'm going to do is, I don't know if I'll necessarily call this a series, but what I plan to do is every month have a color sort of mood board that I would make at least one or two page kits from and that during the month I'll put a video out creating a layout based off of that color, the color scheme that I've chosen. I thought what I would do is start the each video by showing you the color scheme. So this is going to be the one for January. So this is the color scheme. And I just went to Pinterest and looked up sort of winter color schemes. So I liked this one. I thought it was very wintry, kind of colored, inspired. And so this is the one that I'm going to use to create a couple of layouts this month. And I'm not going to create one big kit. I What I'm going to do is just do page kits. And what I thought I would do is I'll start each of my videos for this where I show you the page kit that I've pulled together and then we'll go to a sped up video to actually put the layout itself together. So I'm going to start these by some real time, sort of, hey, here's what I put together and then we'll put the layout together itself. So like I said, this is sort of the color mood board that I have put together, really pretty colors. And you kind of see when you look at my kits, you know, the direction that I veered um, when I create my kits. So what I'm going to do is show you the papers and embellishments and things that I pulled for this first layout. And so I'm going to do that now and we'll get started. And then as the month goes on, I'll come back with another kit, show you the kit, and we'll create the layout. So first and foremost, here are the papers that I chose. So I'm going to put this color so you can kind of see it. I'll kind of keep it in frame so you can see it. These are the colors that I was going with. And these are the papers. A lot of this is just scraps from my stash. And so I have a wood grain paper. I don't know where this is from. Like I said, it's from my scraps, but it was sort of the natural color. I didn't necessarily always go with the colors that it chose down here. Sometimes I went with some of the other colors that you kind of get in the picture itself. So neutral wood grain always works. This one here is, I want to say this is from a Pink Paisley collection, probably a Paige Evans, but I can't remember which one. So there's that one. Again, it's got those neutral wood grain kind of colors. Here is a paper from, this is the Good Life That Way, and this was a Fancy Pants. So very old. This is like from 2012. I'm going to use it for this color here, this sort of very neutral polka dot. I have just two random bits of embossed wood grain paper. So I'm going to kind of just tuck those in for some layers. I have a doily. I have a lighter wood grain, so I'm going to mix some wood grains on this. So this is sort of like a gray wood grain. Then I have this from, I think this is Dear Lizzie from Polka Dot Party, I think it was, and it was just like a 4x6 journaling card. I actually think I'm going to cut this out, this little sentiment, because I'm going to use this to back my photo, I think, but I'm going to cut those out because I think it's really cute. Here is a floral. This I know is from a Pink Paisley collection. I do not remember which one, but... I am going to actually fussy cut these florals. So off camera before I start my video in um, sped up, I will go ahead and cut these out off camera. 
I'll probably do all my fussy cutting off camera just so I have that done for when we are filming the rest of the video. This is some gold glitter paper. Super pretty. Love it. I have a piece of white cardstock and I have this piece of neutral pattern paper with some stars and this I want to say was from one of those Project Life pad. Um, not pads but like the stacks of paper that they used to have to go with different collections. So I do know that that's going to be my background and I'm going to mat this white on top of that so it'll just peek out around the edges. But as you can see, these are all of my pattern papers and they definitely match this. Now I did not go with this darker green. I went with this lighter and that is because in here, even though this is sort of pulling from this color, I went with sort of the lighter side. So this up here and in here matches this. So that is where I took the lighter green instead of this more intense, richer green color down here. So that's one thing that you'll see that I do on some of the kits is I'll end up pulling more from the picture itself and not from necessarily the main colors that I pulled from down here. So those are my papers. I am going to do some mixed media. So I have a stencil that I'm going to use and I have this Martha Stewart pearl paint and uh, let me see it is called mint chip so there's that one and I'm also going to bring in some of the shimmers in antique lace and then I'm going to do this cute little photo of my daughter and then here are the alphas I am using this Goodness Alpha and it is a chipboard. It's the lighter, it's kind of like this pulling in this color here. It's got a sort of a cross hatch kind of pattern on it, but it's very faint. It doesn't really show up on camera, but it's again pulling toward this. This is pulling in toward those lighter greens and I don't have much left of this, but this is the Treasure Thicker. And we'll see what I can spell with that. And then I just have these stickers from like the Target dollar bin. Um, and they're just, they're like a, I want to say like a gray or kind of a very dull gold that definitely went. So all of these obviously keeping toward the neutrals, a little bit of greeny blue color. And then last but not least, I have pulled just some embellishments together. So again, keeping with the neutrals and the light green in color, that is basically what I did here with my different embellishments. So I just have random bits and pieces. Anything you see here that needs to be fussy cut, like I want to fussy cut this camera out of this darker green because I don't want this green, but I liked the two tones of this little camera. This was from like a Chamel paper little labels. I don't know that I'll use all of these embellishments, but I have some frames from Dear Lizzie, I believe. So some frames, some labels, a vellum piece. I have some other cameras, a little banner piece that says, Oh, happy day. Another little piece. I want to say this is from like L studio that says these special moments have a little die cut, little roses, another label, another label, a sticker that says choose love. And then in here I just have some very, very old Evilicious puffy stickers and some gray enamel dots. So again, little finishing touches that I can kind of pull in. This definitely pulls this darker blue in, so I could, if I want to, add some of that. It also has the lighter green that I'm pulling in here as well and the obviously the browns and some of the gray and white neutrals so plenty to choose from I didn't make a huge kit hopefully I'm gonna get a lot of this used up again it's all stuff from my stash stuff that I want to use up so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and 
fussy cut what I want for my layout from these pattern papers and from these embellishments and then we're going to speed up the video and I'll come over with a voiceover and we will put a layout together for this color palette for this first layout for January and then like I said I'll be back throughout the month with some other layouts based off of this color palette. So guys I will catch you in just a minute. Okay so the first thing that we're gonna do is create some interest on this background so that it is no longer a piece of white cardstock and I'm going to take my Martha Stewart pearlized paint and I'm just going to put it through this Vicky Booten stencil. Now I'm not looking for perfection with this. I am really just wanting to create some texture and have that sparkle uh, finish to the background to just add that interest. A lot of this does get covered up because I am going to put my pattern papers all over the top of it. So I'm just kind of putting it on the layout in locations that I know are going to kind of peek out around the pattern papers that are eventually going to go down. And I absolutely love this pearlized paint. It has this beautiful sheen when the light hits it. And the best part about using an acrylic paint like this is I didn't have to gesso my paper. And because I'm not using a lot of water or anything that's extremely wet, I didn't have to worry about my paper um, buckling or you know warping at all so this is great if you're like me and you're a little bit lazy and you don't want to always have to gesso I like to sometimes use this acrylic paint in this way so that I still get something on my background but I don't have to worry about a whole bunch of extra steps the antique linen all I did with that just to add some color and some additional shimmer to the background is I just did some splatters there like you see just again to add some interest I love how this background turned out it really is beautiful when you tilt it in the light and you see the light hitting that paint once everything had dried I am going to take all of the pattern papers that I showed at the beginning and I basically am going to layer up all of these pattern papers and I really did not uh, cut any of these pattern papers down. I, other than taking the branding strip off, I basically left all of the pattern papers in the size that they were and I just layered them up. So this was great in that I just took scraps from my scrap bin and layered them up and got them used up and on this page and I didn't worry about the sizing of them it worked out perfectly so great way to use up scraps and not have to think too hard about cutting down papers or doing anything I just layered them up very simply for this one I also have gone off camera and I cut out all of those florals that were on that original pattern paper and I'm going to use those in each of my embellishment clusters. So I'm going to have three clusters on this page, one to the left, one to the top right, and then one to the bottom left of the photo. And so that's what you see me building out here are those three clusters. The largest cluster on the bottom, my plan with that one where you have the three frames from I believe a Dear Lizzie collection, my plan there is my title is going to go on top of those Polaroid frames. I actually did this in a recent layout and I really loved it and I'm going to do it again on this one. And the thing I like about putting my title in amongst my embellishment or attached to my photo itself is I like to have my clusters and my title always be connected in some way whether it's a title connected to an embellishment cluster or the title connected to the photo I really like how cohesive and how pulled together it makes the layout feel when my title or even embellishment clusters don't feel like they're floating and that they actually sort of make your you draw into the middle of that photo and so <laughs> That is why I'm keeping my sort of title on this sort of embellishment cluster so that it's not floating in the middle of the layout. And I did take those green thickers, which I don't have very many letters left of, but I was able to spell the word Donald. I had to create the L, but 
Other than that, I had all the other letters. So that creates the first word of my title, which is Donald. With the target letter stickers, I went ahead and spelled out your, the. And then with the third set of stickers that I pulled, I was able to create the best for the rest of my title. And so I really like that I'm using three fonts. I always like mixing my fonts. It adds that extra interest to my layouts, which I really do like how it all turns out. Once I have my title down, I'm kind of just going to fuss around a little bit with these clusters. And then I will go ahead here in a second and just glue everything down off camera. Once I come back, I will put the finishing touches on this layout and I'm kind of just showing you how it looks when the light hits it and each of those embellishment clusters. Now I am taking those puffy stickers and I'm going to use a couple, two of the cameras and then this arrow that says love. And I have a camera in the bottom cluster so I added the cameras to those two top clusters. Then because no Disney layout is complete without a Mickey head, I did take that gold glitter paper and I punched out some Mickey heads. I'm going to put just one down here in this bottom cluster and then I will also take that glitter paper and punch out some stars to scatter around as well. So while I'm doing that I will just sit, let you know that this photo is of my daughter and she was meeting Donald and Donald was one of her favorite characters to meet. We were at Animal Kingdom when I took this picture and this was the first year that she would actually walk up to the characters herself. She didn't have to have somebody hold her hand. She went and did it all by herself. And so it was very cute to see her just loving to be close to the characters and, you know, talk to them and things like that. And so I snapped this really cute picture of her and Donald. Now, as a finishing touch, once I have those stars down, I am just going to take those gray enamel dots. And with that, this layout will be complete. There are still photos coming up and guys, if you end up creating anything with this color scheme, please link down below so that I can give you some love and I hope you will enjoy this sort of color series as I go throughout the year with the different color boards and guys with that, I will catch you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Bye bye.